by learning about other people's experiences. I want to remind everyone this week about the Art Responders event we have on Wednesday, which is going to be a very special event. This Art Responder series, if you haven't checked it out, uh, Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, each week we're interviewing someone who has, who uses their form of self-expression, usually an artist or a poet or a musician, and they're performing for us original work and then sharing how it relates to these themes. And it's been extremely powerful and we have another powerful show this week. So invite you to that. Thank you to our sponsors for keeping this regular. And thank you, of course, to the people on this call. Uh, your, your, your donations have been honestly crucial to our entire organization. Thank you to Dara. This is Dara. Dara's on the call. Uh, Dara, your, your smile is looking great today. Uh, she helps book these and it makes this all possible. Uh, and she is letting us know that we are going to be uh, turning on our microphones when we get to the breakouts where we're going to connect around the themes of today's session. And thank you in advance for keeping your cameras on if you're able so we can see your smiling faces. And please, why don't we use the chat right now to share uh, where we're calling in from and something you're looking forward to this week. Uh, let's see, we have Gina and Julie saying hi. Great to see you both. I'm seeing some new faces, but if you wanna share where you're calling in from and, and just say what's up, that would be fabulous. And now I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Zubin Desai, who runs our product and our, does a lot of design at Reimagine. He's going to introduce today's uh, incredible guests. Thank you, Zubin, for, for stepping in for this, this um, really, really uh, special session. All right. Thank you, Brad. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Zubin Desai. I am very excited to introduce Sadhana. I actually, I grew up actually, Hindu. I grew up and I'm, okay, there we go. I grew up Hindu and, you know, I've been finding my way back into Hinduism and Eastern religion, spirituality as I've, as I've gotten older, really, after kind of really falling, a, falling a, apart from it um, for many years. And so I'm really, really excited and thrilled to bring in um, Eastern religion into re reimagined events because there's, there's so much to learn about end of life from, from these voices and rituals that, that, most of our audience doesn't really have a chance to experience. So I'm very, very excited for Sadhana to be here. Quick introduction about Sadhana. Sadhana empowers Hindu American communities to live out the values of their faith through service, community transformation, and targeted advocacy work. And I'm honored to introduce Pandita Pratima Kushmani Dube, who's a social justice advocate and Sadhana's resident Hindu priestess, in the word for priestess is Pandita. Pratima grew up in the Bhavani Ma Mandir in Brooklyn, New York, which is a Hindu temple run by her family. Since her childhood, she has infused her temple community with her egalitarianism and passion for justice. Pratima is also a musician who often performs in the Indo-Caribbean community in New York. Pratima is excited to help Sadhana reach temple communities in New York and beyond and mobilize community members to connect their faith to social justice issues and engage in Seva, which means service. So Pratima, it's great to have you here. Thank you for being here. Namaste, Pranam, and greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this ritual. So what I'm going to be performing today is not a shrad. I'm going to be performing something called tarpan. And tarpan is when someone passes away, for between the time of death to 12 days, you have to make two offerings a day, which is called tarpan. So when the sun rises, you pour milk or water mixed with black sesame seeds, which basically represents all of the unfulfilled desires or unresolved emotions that the person or a loved one may have died with. And so I'm going to be making an offering of tarpan with milk and black sesame seeds, which is called til and dhut, 
and then I'm offering a Tulsi leaf, which traditionally we offer a Tulsi leaf to Lord Krishna or to Lord Vishnu, who is said to be the one that receives us all at the end of our journey. Sorry for the airplane. I'm right here by the bay, so you know, planes are always flying over. This is also part of the reimagining ceremony. Being able to perform your rituals despite any adversity or any obstacle or any issue. The second reimagining portion of this is that I'm a woman performing karma. Traditionally, only men perform karma. So I invite you all, if you would like to, get a glass of water or a cup of milk now. I'm going to give you about mm, a minute to go into your kitchen and do so, if you want to. And we're going to face east. Or if you'd like to, you can offer the water into your plant or outside of your window. And what you can do is think of, a, of, a, of an ancestor, think of someone that you want to make this offering on behalf of. And what we're doing is actually asking the sun, we're asking Surya, we're asking the cosmic energies, the elements in our ancestors and gods to please help our, our, our bereaved souls or help the individuals that have left this world to find peace, find liberation, and may they find fulfillment wherever they are. So go ahead and get your milk or your water. I'm going to give you about a minute. Um, and then we're going to face east. And then while I'm chanting these appropriate mantras, the deities that we're going to be invoking is Sri Ganesha, who is the remover of all obstacles. We're asking him in this few minutes to remove any sound obstacles, any planes, any ice cream trucks, so that you can hear my mantras. We're asking the divine Ganesh, Sri Ganesha to also remove any obstacles that may have that, that our ancestors or whoever may have passed on, that any obstacles that is gonna prevent them from finding peace, may you remove that. And may you always help them to find liberation. May you help us to be resilient enough to find the strength within us to be our better selves. So at this moment, we're gonna face East and we're going to, to Lord Ganesha, make the first few invocational mantras. After that, we're going to make some invocation mantras to Lord Shiva, who is the cosmic destroyer, the regenerative destroyer, who's part of the Trinity. So there's Brahma, who's the creator of everything that exists in this world. Then there is Vishnu, the sustainer. He's the one who keeps us afloat while we're in this mundane existence. And then at the end of our journey, Lord Shiva receives us and he helps us to find moksha or liberation. So take a few more seconds, get your, get your water, your milk, and we're gonna get started. O elephant headed Ganesha, you represent wisdom and the removal of all obstacles. You are also the one that helps us to navigate through our hurdles. them to find liberation without any issues or any difficulties. Oh Brahma, the creator, you created us, even the Atma that still exists after this, this birth. We ask of you to help us to find peace every part of our existence, from this human existence to the afterlife. Oh Vishnu, we ask of you to help us to find emotional stability. And even when we leave this world, sometimes we leave with unfulfilled desires, darkness that may have plagued their soul at the moment. Please help us to find light and resilience. Or Lord Shiva, please destroy any informities in our path, both in this existence of human existence and in the afterlife. Oh, we now offer our Tarpan. So you can say the name of your loved ones while I'm doing this and just think of them and ask for them to receive peace and liberation. Om Tat Purushaya Vitlahi Mahadeva Yadimahi Tanno Rutra Prachodayat Om Trayambakam Yajamahi Sugandhim Pushti Vardhanam Guru Varukhame Vabandhanat Mritsyod Mokshim Mamritat 
ओम सहना वहत सहना भुनक्त सहा बीज करवा वह तेजस्विना वजित मस्तु नाविक ईशा वह and the final prayer that we say it means this atma the soul that existed in this human body it may have come from a place where we made mistakes before so we ask of you o lord to forgive us for those past life mistakes knowingly and unknowingly we make mistakes now we might in the future forgive us for those and o lord even in the astral life forgive us for any wrong doings we may have done So just close your eyes and with me just think very carefully and today being a new moon let's set some intentions some good positive intentions Om papu ham papu karma ham papu atma papu sambhava trahi maam pundhari kaksham sabhavyanantar suchi om loka samasta sukhi no bhavantu om shanti ओम सत्यम ओम शक्ति शांति शांति हरि ओम बी पीस थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रतिमा दैट वाज दैट आई रिमेंबर सेरेमनीज लाइक दैट growing up and so it's it, it takes me back certainly takes me back to place in my life um where that was much bigger part of my life so it's it's just it's nice to reconnect I'd like to now introduce Aminta Kilaman Narain she works as a legislative attorney in the New York City Council drafting and negotiating laws and policies ranging from women's rights to homelessness and housing to access to public benefits and child welfare. In her personal capacity, Aminta is a co-founder of Sadhana, Coalition of Progressive Hindus, a non-profit organization working to lift up the values at the heart of social justice with those at the heart of Hinduism. I'd like to turn it over now to Aminta. Namaste and good afternoon everyone. Thank you so much firstly to Reimagine for giving us this platform at Sadhana to share our hearts with those who are on this call right now. I I say namaste. Namaste means the divinity within me bows to the divinity within you. And in, in Hinduism, we believe there's a spark of divinity in every single entity that exists in this world. And so that would mean that we are all in of ourselves divine. And I I also want to say thank you to my sister Pratima ji for a beautiful ceremony. at the end of that ceremony um some of the words that were chanted were loka samasta sukhino bhavantu and that means may all beings in this world be happy and that's something that i think we all want to achieve so today i i'm going to be talking a little bit about something that's very heavy and i just want to be i i just want to be open and transparent about that that it's it's not always easy to talk about these issues but it's so important and um today I'm going to be talking about gender based violence and we're in a time for the last few months it's been very challenging for so many of us we we are all grieving in actual in in some way whether we've been directly or indirectly impacted by the pandemic um we have been impacted and as a faith leader and as somebody that's that's done a lot of my organizing in the hindu communities of new york city i've seen that leaders have had to shift their practice zoom has become our new way of sharing in community with each other and i'm really grateful that we have this technology um during such heavy times so we can find that that sense of peace amongst each other and that sense of community and so when we talk about gender based violence during this pandemic um the reality is that we don't have the statistics to necessarily denote how much gender based violence has risen in this time but we know that it has and we know that it has because of the fact the, the the very virtue of the fact that we are all so many of us are literally trapped at home um it's easy for tempers to inflame it for violence to ensue particularly when that was already the case pre pandemic um 
and houses of worship, which once were spaces of solace and of comfort for survivors. I, I as, a as a person growing up, very devout Hindu who went to my temple every Sunday and has no longer been able to do so, um, I know that when I'm in community with my temple congregation, I'll look around and I'll see um, aunties and sisters with tears in their eyes when they hear some of the hymns that are sung, which we call pajans, um, in the Indo-Caribbean tradition. And, and that's because they're really turning to God during this time. And, and, and this is the only way, this is sometimes the only place they're allowed to, to be outside of the home is their temple space. And so it is particularly it's trying to, to know that temples are closed, but that we are trying to reopen. And um, while all that is being said, the, the needs of survivors have not gone away. Um, I, in my, in my course of my work as an organizer and as an attorney and as somebody that the community often reaches out to for all a host of different, different issues, I've been hearing things like, you know, because of the economic, the economic struggles that we are experiencing right now, there are homes where corners have to be cut and there are wives who no longer have cell phone service because um, their line had to be cut because it was deemed unnecessary. And what that means is limited now, limited access now to dial 911 in times of, in times of difficulty or to contact a friend or family member in times of, in times of needing advice and needing that comfort. And so it's, it's very challenging to, to figure out ways that we can be supportive of, of community members who are experiencing this type of violence. And also sustenance is a big part of this as well. I mean, we, we talk about resources for, for community members. So I'm also the founder of a nonprofit that started in January of this year. And we started because we were seeing incidents of gender-based violence, particularly among women my age. Um, and th these incidents were resulting in, in death, in, in murder and suicide. And it was very, it was, it's very troubling to see this, these repeat stories in the news in the community that I'm a part of. It's a very small community in Queens and, and we see this happening. We wonder to ourselves, well, what, are, what can we do to change this? And we wanted to mobilize women and gender nonconforming individuals on our streets, um, in our community and, and create a very hyper local women's march. And that was supposed to happen, but it didn't happen because of the pandemic. But we're, we're re strategizing ways in which to bring resources to, to individuals. And, and why, why do I feel so passionately about this? Because I myself um, am a survivor of violence, of gender-based violence, and I've witnessed gender-based violence um, over the course of my life. Um, and so for me, I remember the time where I felt like there was no way out. And I remember the community that I had that I, I was able to lean on I want to be able to create that for people and, and be a champion of justice in that way, even in quiet ways. And so I'm hopeful that we can, as a, as a collective today, explore how we can be champions of change in our own community. Uh, we, we saw Pratima earlier, who is a female priest, a female pandita in our community. That's, that's something that you don't see very often, at least from the Indo-Caribbean tradition. So I should say a little bit about Indo-Caribbeans. So, um, so my ancestors came from India back in the early 1800s to the Caribbean. I don't speak a word other than English, um, a language other than English rather. I was, uh, so, but I was brought up very much devout Hindu and faith has been so much of the way in which I find my connection to who I am and to my motherland. I have, uh, the, the Indo-Caribbean tradition is very, is very interesting in that while we don't, know the language that by which we pray oftentimes that sense of peace that sense of comfort still comes to us as we as we chant these mantras and um, faith is just so much a part of of my organizing i i will also say that indo-caribbean women and and indo-caribbeans face a long history of intergenerational trauma which has in, in part possibly resulted in the, the, the incidents of violence that we see in the community and ways in which we need to respond in a culturally appropriate way. In the early 1800s, there were just a handful of women that were brought over from India to the Caribbean. And the ratio, I, I, I don't quote me on this, but, but it was something like 10 to one from women to men. And what, 
what ultimately resulted was um, discrimination and violence against women, this notion of ownership of women, this notion of rape and of violence against women being acceptable, um, this commodifying of women, this hypersexualization of women, which ultimately resulted in unfair stereotypes that perpetuates the cycle of violence. And this isn't just the case for Indo-Caribbean women, but it's the case of women of color all over the world. Um, and so we have to figure out ways in which to combat this, um, both during the pandemic, but also just in, in general in our lives. How do we, how do we create space to ultimately get at the root causes of gender-based violence, to get at the root causes of sexism, of patriarchy, of all, of all of the reasons why this violence shows up. How do we raise our children and our grandchildren to be stewards of change? And I don't have the answers, um, but I think these are questions that we need to grapple with because we all can be stewards of change. And the reality is, as somebody who's survived violence, it can result in both literal or um, figurative death. And I see there's a question. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and I, I would want us to, to strategize around that. I, a few months ago, wrote a ritual um, it for Rubin Magazine through Reimagine on what it could look like for us to implement some of these changes in our own daily lives. At Sadhana, uh, so Pratima just presented to you all, and she was actually at Jamaica Bay, which is what we call our local New York City Ganges. And it's where lots of Hindus go to pray, uh, to perform their rituals. And at Sadhana, what we've actually seen is that um, a lot of the, the, the rituals that are performed are not, are not eco-friendly. And Hinduism promotes this principle of ahimsa, which is nonviolence. And to us, the very virtue of performing any religious ceremony that is not eco-friendly is an act of violation to the earth. And we worship the earth as goddess. So it is arguably an act of gender-based violence. And so we, we, we have a project called Project Prithvi. And actually during these months, these warm months, we would have been out at the bay, cleaning up the bay, once a month with community partners, including Reimagine. But unfortunately, we were not able to do so this year due to the pandemic. But there are many ways in which we can fight the violence and implement small changes in our own lives, which I'm hoping, again, that we can discuss. Mark, I did, I did see that you, you'd like to partner in the future. Definitely going to reach out to you about that. And so every time you drop something in, in the water, there are ripples. And there are ripples, whether you're dropping something very tiny or something very big. And so I'm hopeful that we can, in the time that we have together, strategize around ways we can make ripples, make waves, and end the cycle of violence in general, in our lives and in the world at large. So again, I wanna thank everybody at Reimagine. A special thanks to Andy for, for inviting me to be part of this, this collective today. And I'll turn it back over to Brad. Thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you so much, Aminta. It, it really means a lot to have you both here today, sharing this with us, braving the winds, and, and then, um, and also braving hard conversation. And me, myself, I'm now I'm here in construction, jackhammers outside my, my place. So, we're all we're all braving today, but but honestly, I um, yeah, it's just it's it's so neat for people I think on this call who haven't experienced rituals like this before to participate in them and then to learn more about your work and um, to see to see how tightly bound social justice is um, with uh, spirituality, and I think that connection. Uh, is one that we should all be exploring more. And so we're gonna be doing that really around the theme that you mentioned today as we uh, head into our breakout rooms. Um, let's see, I'm curious how many people are here. So I'm wondering if we wanna, if we just want to stay together in this main room. 
Zira, are you there? Yeah, I, I, <clears throat> my recommendation would be to go into smaller groups given the okay. nature of the conversation. But All right, that, let's do it. So you, everyone knows the, 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 the general game plan, I think, who's here, which is great. We're going to get into groups and someone will lead us, one, one amongst you. Uh, and if you have any problems, please email us at hello at let's reimagine.org. But this is obviously the, the exciting part. Um, please keep the conversations confidential. Share your story. Uh, don't offer unsolicited advice or judgments, especially around what we're talking about today. Uh, everyone has a right to pass. And please keep your responses to three minutes to make space for others to share. And what we're going to chat about is we're going to share where we're calling in from. And then this, this really hard question, but one that is important for us to talk about. How is gender-based violence manifested in your life or in the life of someone you know or love? Uh, and just keep in mind when we talk about gender-based violence manifesting your, your own life, you know, you, as I mentioned before, you don't have to share. I know this can bring up a lot of really challenging topics and, you know, we don't have any psychologists on hand or we might in the audience, but not, you know, this is a self-guided group. Uh, and so just want to create safe spaces f where you feel comfortable sharing whatever you feel like. That's why you can also talk about uh, someone you know or you love, or just in general, you can talk about this topic, or you can, just, uh, you can just pass, which is totally fine and listen. And then the other question is, what's one tangible way you can, uh, way you can curb gender-based violence? What can you do to, 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 in our own lives? And that's a challenging question that we can maybe think through together. What can we do? Uh, and I'm curious to hear what comes out of that, that question. So with that in mind, Dara, do you want to send us off into the breakouts? Yep. 